Let's begin by talking about the this list of sequence formulas. Uh, for this video, we'll need to know when uh, certain fractions are larger or smaller than one another, and uh, it's going to be useful to know these simpler uh, facts in order to break down these fractions into simpler problems. Okay, so for example, let's just take a look at n factorial and b to the n. And my claim is that n factorial is eventually larger than b to the n. Now b could be any number greater than 1, uh, so let's just assume that for our special case, let's assume b is equal to 3. So to prove this, or just to, uh, not to prove this, but to give you a reason to believe it, I'm going to do a chart of values. So we'll pick different values for n, and we'll see how those affect n factorial and 3 to the n. So 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial, we'll multiply that 2 by 3 to get 6, 4 factorial is 24, 5 factorial is 120, 6 factorial is 270. Now let's compare this with 3 to the n. Well, 3 to the 0 power is 1, 3 to the 1 power is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the 4th is 81, and then we'll multiply that by 3 again to get 243, multiply that by 3 again to get 729, let's keep going with this, a couple more, 7 factorial would be 720 times 7 is 5 50 40 5040 and then down here we'll multiply 729 by 3 again to get 2187 and uh, we'll do one more for good measure 8 factorial would be 7 factorial times 8 which my calculator says is 40320 and then 3 to the 8 power would be 3 to the 7 power, 2187 times 3, which my calculator says is 6561. And so let's notice a couple of things about this. Is that, first of all, um, 3 to the n power is sometimes larger. Uh, in fact, for a little while, 3 to the n was larger, uh, all the way from 1 to 5. However, eventually, n factorial became the larger number. And it's going to stay be, uh, the larger number, because what you can do is you can notice that, well, from step to step, what are we doing here? We're just multiplying by 3 each time. Every time you raise your power, you're multiplying, that's a uh, multiplying x, I'll use a dot for that. We're multiplying by 3 each time. And that explains why it starts out bigger for a little while. Because up here, here we just multiplied by 1, here we just multiplied by 2, here we multiplied by 3, but now we're going to be multiplying by bigger numbers, by 4, by 5, by 6. But down here, we're going to keep multiplying by 3. So even though for a while, 3 to the n was bigger, eventually the top, the factorial, gets bigger at uh, this point right here, 7 factorial is where it first gets larger, and it's going to stay larger because we're going to be multiplying by larger numbers each time. Okay, so that's what I mean by eventually bigger, is that if you go out, out far enough, you plug in big enough numbers, n factorial is going to be bigger than b to the n, n to the n power is going to be even larger than n factorial, but any exponential, where the variable is in the exponent instead of in the base, that's going to be larger. And then these polynomial powers uh, are going to be larger than logarithms. And of course, any positive content, uh, constant is going to be, because it doesn't change, it doesn't get larger, uh, it'll be smaller than any of these, which are uh, growing to infinity. Okay, so what's the point of all this? Well.
take a look at this example. I'm going to show that this left fraction is less than or equal to the right fraction, uh, the right expression, for sufficiently large values of m. Okay, so how could I go about doing that? And so when I say sufficiently large values of m, it doesn't have to work for all integers m uh, or even all positive integers m, but eventually, if we plug in things bigger than a thousand or a million, you know, uh, all but finitely many numbers, this should be true. And uh, how I could do that is I'll take the left fraction and I'm trying to make it less than or equal to. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is because I'm dealing with fractions, I need to make sure that the top is either the bigger or the same because it's less than or equal to, so the tops should be bigger or the same on both of these fractions I'm going to write here. And on the bottom, it needs to be smaller or the same. And uh, let's think about that for a second. Why does it need to be smaller? Well, smaller denominator means you're dividing by a smaller number, which means you get a bigger number. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure we're making the top smaller, sorry, the top bigger and the bottom smaller, or that one or both of them could be the same. So uh, let's see here. To, we're going to try and make it look like this fraction here. Well, I'm going to start because the bottom part reminds me a lot more. This is uh, the same thing as 2 times 1 over 2 to the m, or 2 over 2 to the m. Those are all the same thing. So I'm going to try to make this denominator look like 2 to the m. Okay. Well, uh, to make this denominator smaller, I could always just get rid of the plus 5, right? Get rid of that plus 5. That's smaller. Okay. And then that's going to make it look a little bit closer to this 2 over 2 to the m that I'm trying to make it equal to. Now for the top, I want to make it bigger or the same. And, uh, well, what could I do? Well, I could look at my list of sequence formulas, and I notice that m cubed, or any positive constant like 7, those are both smaller than b to the n power, where b is greater than 1. So for example, I could do to the m. I'm using m's, of course, in the place of n in this problem. Both 7 and m cubed are less than or equal to 3 to m. Uh, for sufficiently large variables m. So I'm going to take both of those, I'm going to replace those with 2 to the m plus 2 to the m. I've made both of them bigger for sufficiently large values of m. And you could just test this. If you just plug in the number 10 into your uh, calculator, you can see that this would be about, this would be a, a thousand and seven on the top here. Over here, it would get you a number bigger than 2,000. And on the right, uh, if I simplify this, I get 2 times 2 to the m over 4 to the m. That's 2 times 2 fourths to the m. And that's 2 times 1 half to the m. All right. So that finishes my proof there uh, that the original fraction is less than or equal to the given uh, expression. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of this? We've been talking about sequences and series. Uh, how could we use this to talk about the convergence of a series? And that's where the comparison test comes in. So here's the comparison test, the direct comparison test. I'll label this. sometimes called DCT for short. And uh, it looks kind of technical here, so I'll, I'll go through this, but I'll explain this intuitively what's going on here. So we're starting with a series, and the terms, we can't have any negatives uh, to mess us up here. So we're dealing, dealing with all zeros and positive terms. And uh, there's two cases. We could compare against a convergent series that is bigger than the series that we're asked about, and if so, 
R series converges as well. Or we could compare with a divergent series that's smaller than R series, and then we would show that R series diverges as well. So what is this uh, intuition? Well, basically what this is saying is that we want to know about this series. That'll be our AN terms. We should know that the BN series here, we should know that it converges or we know that it diverges. And the idea is that if we know it converges and we're smaller than it, okay? So basically we know that this is finite. That's the way I think of it. And we're smaller than finite. Okay? Well, if we're smaller than finite, and because we have non-negative terms, we're bigger than zero, so we're between zero and finite, and we're always and we're monotonic sequence. Uh, that's what's going to be enough to show that the series, uh, the sequence of partial sums converges. Meanwhile, in this other case here, it's got messy, so let me get rid of a lot of this notation. Down here, we know that we're divergent, and now we're bigger than, in this case, if it diverges, it's going to diverge to infinity. So we think of this as bigger than infinity. Because the terms here are smaller than our terms, so our sum must be bigger than the infinite sum of the bn's, and we already know that that's infinite, and if we're bigger than infinite, we're also infinite. So there's my intuition. Okay, let's put this to the test. So we're going to show that the series of this fraction converges by comparing with the series I uh, just showed was bigger. Okay, so the direct comparison test, the way I would solve this problem, is simply uh, I'm comparing with this is a convergent geometric series because the ratio of one half is absolute value it's less than one so it's a convergent geometric series so we're comparing with a geometric series sorry convergent series which means that these are going to be our BNs these are going to be our ANs and what we need to do is show that the an is less than or equal to bn. m cubed plus 7, 4m plus 5 is less than or equal to, and we need to do some work to get that it's less than or equal to 2 times 1 half to the m. But we did that. That was the previous example. We did that exact work in the previous example. So as soon as we've done this uh, direct comparison test, we could write, since the series of 2 times 1 over 2 to the m converges, the smaller series that we were asked about, m cubed plus 7, over 4 to the m plus 5 also converges. Because we're smaller than finite, we're also going to be finite. That's my intuition. Okay, that finishes the problem. Let's take a look at another. Now, most of the time, we're not told if the series converges or diverges. In this case, we're asked to figure it out for ourselves. So, uh, usually the way we approach this is we're going to take a look at the biggest terms on the top and bottom. And I happen to know that 2 over n to the 1 third 
Well, it's a p-series, right? n equals 1 to infinity. p-series and the p, which is 1 third, is less than 1. And in that case, for p-series, less than 1 means diverges. All right. So what does that do for us? Well, this is all kind of in my head here. So you do that in your head or in the margins somewhere. And the point is, you need to know, before you start using the direct comparison test, you need to have a good guess as to the answer. So my guess is that it diverges. So now I need to prove it using the direct comparison test. 2 over n to the 1 third plus 5. And to prove divergence, we need to show that we are bigger than infinity. Convergence says we need to show that we're smaller than finite. For divergence, we need to show that we're bigger than infinite. Because that's what a divergent uh, sum of positive values would be. It would be an infinite sum. So, uh, well, that's all well and good. Uh, let's see, how would I go ahead and prove this? Well, remember, I need to make... This is backwards of what we did before. This is trying to make the fraction smaller. We need to make sure the top is smaller or the same. And on the bottom, we need to make sure it becomes bigger or the same. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look here. What can we do? Now, it's tempting to just drop off that plus 5 on the bottom to leave just an nq or into the one third. But the problem with that is that we've made it smaller. All right, we got rid of some stuff on the bottom. We're dividing by a smaller number, which makes a bigger fraction which means that my inequality is pointing in the wrong direction. Okay, well, back up. So instead, what do we need to do? Well, what we could do is we could change this 5 into something that's eventually bigger, such as another n to the 1 third. If we go way back to the list, notice that any positive constant is eventually smaller than n raised to any positive power. So I took my constant 5 here and, raise, and noticed that it was smaller than n to the 1 third. You know, you, you plug in, uh, say, 1,000. The cube root of 1,000 is 10. The cube root of anything bigger than 1,000 is bigger than 10. So we've definitely made it bigger than 5. All right. On the top, I think I'll just leave that the same because now on the bottom I can combine those. And that gets me 1 over n to the 1 third. Notice that I do this. There's no limits involved here. It's all just the fraction. There's no series involved here. I don't write the little series sum here because I'm not dealing with that right now. I'm comparing the terms of this series. And now I can say that since the smaller series sum of n to the 1 third it equals 1 to infinity. That's a divergent p-series. My guess is going to turn out to be right. I found a smaller divergent series. The bigger series, the one I was asked about, 2 over n to the 1 third plus 5, also diverges. Because I proved that my series that I was asked about is bigger than a series I can prove is has an infinite uh, sum when you add it all up, my series also cannot add to a finite sum because it's bigger. Take a look at another. So this is an example of something I could use the integral test for. If I wanted to turn this into an integral, I could. Uh, but um, I think this is even easier using the direct comparison test. Well, first of all, do I think it's going to converge or diverge? And the way I would do that is just notice that, well, if I take this 
e to the k over e to the 2k, the biggest things on the top and bottom, that's uh, e over e squared to the k. So that's 1 over e to the k. That's a convergent geometric series. So I do all that, but I do this in my head just to get my guess. It can't be part of my solution. It's just guesswork. But my guess is that it converges. So now I'm going to prove it, it converges using the direct comparison test. I'm going to take just the terms of the series. And to prove that it converges using direct comparison, I need to prove that it's smaller than another convergent series. Okay, so let's think about this for just a moment. I need to make the top bigger or the same. At the bottom, I need to make smaller or the same. And I would like to make it so that I can combine things on the top and bottom. I think I'll keep the top the same. And I'm going to make the bottom smaller. Okay, so how am I going to approach this? Well, if I leave it as it is, um, I mean, I can't leave it as it is. I've got I to make a change here. I need to make it smaller. So I can't just get rid of the plus one and make it, sorry, the minus one and make it plus zero because that would be making it bigger. So I've got to subtract even more than what I'm already subtracting. So one way I could take care of this is I could subtract half of an e to the 2k. Uh, it sounds reasonable, just think about it for a moment, that half of e to the 2k for values of k, that's going to be a bigger number than 1. But since we're subtracting it, we're making it a smaller denominator, and that's what's important. Once I've made that observation, I can combine these terms. i got 1 e to the 2k minus a half e to the 2k, that leaves me with 1 half e to the 2k, e to the k on the top, and then I'll factor out e to the k over e to the k, leaving me with 1 over 1 half e to the k, and that's 2 over e to the k, or 2 times 1 over e to the k power. All right, this is not the same convergent geometric series we got a moment ago. But it is a convergent geometric series, when we make it a series, since the bigger, I proved that it was bigger, the bigger series, 2, 1 over e to the k, it actually doesn't matter what your starting index is, because that will not affect convergence, but it converges. The smaller series that we were asked about, k equals 3 to infinity, not that it matters, but we do have to respond to the original question, k equals whatever to infinity would also have to converge. We proved that the series we were asked about is smaller than a finite series, therefore the series we were asked about is also finite. That's what convergent means. One more example. All right, does this converge or diverge? So again, in my scratch work or in my head, wherever, I might start rewriting this a little bit. Uh, first of all, I don't like that one half uh, negative. That's the same thing. That's a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So that's what I'm dealing with here. And uh, or I could leave this. I could make this look more like a P series. It's not quite a p-series. If we got rid of this natural log of m, that would be a p-series. All right. So these are not, uh, not equal to each other, though, because I did some scratching out here. So let me be more careful. But I'm just thinking about that looks like 1 over m to the 1 half, and that diverges. 
Okay, this is just for my own purpose to help me come up with my guess. All right, this doesn't help me prove to anybody what it actually is, so I'll do that on scratch paper or I'll scratch it out once I've got my guess because it doesn't actually prove anything. Now I'm going to actually prove it using the direct comparison test. I think it's going to diverge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original m, natural log of m to the negative one half, that equals 1 over square root m, natural log of m. And to prove divergence, I need to show that I'm bigger than infinity. I'm bigger than the terms of a series that add up to infinity. That's the idea. So, uh, what can I do here? I need to make the top the same or smaller. And the bottom needs to be bigger or the same. Okay, well, on the bottom here, uh, let's see here. The problem that, that I, need, I need, I need this to simplify to something that I know about. You Probably a P-series. And if I take a look at this, well, I really don't like the natural log. I'd like to get rid of that. But I can't just drop it off because that would be making it smaller. Natural log of m is bigger than 1 for most values of m. So that would be making it smaller. That's no good. But what I could do is just replace the natural log of m with another m. Going way back here, notice that logarithms are eventually smaller than any power of the variable. So by replacing natural log of m with just m, I have definitely made the denominator bigger, which gets me the smaller fraction that I need. It's 1 over root m squared and since m is positive, that's just 1 over m. That's great, because 1 over m is the harmonic series. Since the smaller harmonic series, we know that diverges. The larger series we were asked about uh, started at m equals 2, but it would be true no matter what m started equaling m, natural log of m, negative one-half, also diverges. The thing to note here is that if you don't do this guesswork, even though it doesn't help you solve the problem, if you don't do the guesswork, you don't know which direction to put this inequality. And of course, if you're guessing incorrect, it's going to be impossible to prove that inequality uh, for something that actually ends up matching the convergence or the divergence. So getting used to doing this guesswork here is very important to help uh, save you time when actually attempting to use the direct comparison test.